Welcome back, everyone, to part two of episode three, The Trial for Elements of Justice, Crusading for a Turnabout. I'm not even going to fuck around with this. I've had some food. I'm feeling good. A little belchy, but that's fine. You know, we all get gas sometimes. It's perfectly natural. Uh, <clears throat> let's see what Private Eye has to say here. This is... Hmm. Witness... Please state your name and occupation for the record. My <coughs> name is Private Eye, Princess. Detective. And might I say, Milady. good morning to everyone present. Princess Twilight, Miss Sykes, my lord. Um, good morning. Lord, huh? <laughs> <laughs> to of course you could. And we've already lost him. <laughs> the prosecution's first course of action will be to make the actions of the victim clear to the court. Detective, please testify in regards to this matter. At once, Your Highness. The victim of Royal Order was stationed in Candlemont until late afternoon on the day of his murder. After his shift ended, he boarded a train and arrived in Ponyville at around a quarter past nine that night. Upon his return home, he was informed of Turning's whereabouts and decided to head into the Everfree Forest to find him. When he arrived at the base of the bridge, in front of the castle of the two sisters, he was ambushed and murdered. Our investigation determined that Turning Page had gone off into the forest with Scootaloo that night for currently unknown reasons. We believe this is why the victim was in the forest that night. He was trying to save his son. I see. You'd certainly need a very good reason to be willing to head that far into the forest. If I recall correctly, that place is filled with all kinds of dangerous creatures, isn't it? It is indeed, Your Honor. <clears throat> Figuring out why the victim chose to go so far into the forest was one of the key <coughs> questions we had during our investigation. It was the statement of one Miss Devotion that cleared the matter up for us. Miss Devotion? The victim's wife, Fair Devotion. She's a substitute teacher at the local schoolhouse. While her husband was away in Canterlot, Miss Devotion would take care of her son all by herself. This on top of her demanding role as a teacher and member of the Ponyville School Board, you see. Hmm. Indeed. She certainly sounds like a very kind, hard-working mare. Not sure about that, honestly. She was home when the victim returned. Luna had nothing to say to that. Who told him the turning page had gone into the forest that night. So, the reason the victim went into the forest was to chase after his son? That is what the evidence and statement currently point to, yes. It's hard to argue against that. I guess in that case, I'll just see what other information I can draw out of Private Eye. Now, Miss Sykes, you may begin your cross-examination. The victim of Royal Order was stationed in Candlemont until late afternoon on the day of his murder. Hold it! What was he doing there? He was performing his routine duties as a guard. Nothing out of the ordinary. What did those duties entail? Monitoring doors, patrolling hallways, the standard fare. So he was just your average, everyday guard? I suppose you could say that, yes. There was nothing special about his rank, his title, anything at all? Well, as a detective, I can only know so much. What do you think, Princess Luna? It's just as Detective I says. As someone who gave the victim his orders, I can say with certainty that there was nothing that set him apart from the other guards in our entourage. If you're looking for a motive defense, I'm sorry to say that you will not find it here. Well... There you have it. You couldn't ask for a clearer answer than that. Shoot. I was really hoping I would get something out of that. If he was just an ordinary guard, then that eliminates any potential motive that could be tied to his rank. Maybe. Still, though, the way Private Eye shifted my question to Princess Elena... I noticed that. Something still doesn't seem right here. Defense! Please stop staring at the witness and continue your cross-examination. Uh, uh, yes! S sorry, Your Honor. 
I'll have to look into that later. Gotta continue pressing the detective for information now. After his shift ended, he boarded a train and arrived in Ponyville at around a quarter past nine that night. Hold it! How long had he stayed in Canterlot? Nearly a month, according to our findings. A... Uh, a month? Royal Order often spent many weeks in Canterlot with little time to himself. Even when offered extended sabbaticals, he chose to forego them in service to the Crown. Hmm. This fellow seemed like quite the workaholic. Or he was staying away Says from home. the guy working on his vacation. He was simply honor-bound to serving Equestria and maintaining harmony amongst its citizens. Whenever he wasn't on active duty, he spent all of his time with his family in Ponyville. He certainly was the epitome of a royal guard's pony. His death will surely echo a great sense of loss for both his country and those close to him. Huh? That's odd. That sounded a lot more sorrowful than anything I would expect from Private Eye. The day he was murdered was no different than any of his other off-duty times. He returned to Ponyville to visit his family. According to our investigation into the ticket purchases and train schedules for February 12th, Royal's train arrived in Ponyville at a quarter past nine. He then headed straight home, arriving about ten minutes later. And what did the victim do once he got there? On his return home, I, and I, he was I have noticed how I like I like how we have the canon characters on this side, and all the OCs on that side. So, it was Fair Devotion who told the victim that Turning Page had gone into the forest. Indeed, we heard this from Miss Devotion herself. And how did she know what her son was doing? I doubt she would have allowed Turning to go somewhere that dangerous. During our investigation at the victim's house, we found a note written in Turning's horn writing confessing to his actions that night. Miss Devotion knew where her son had gone because of this note. Went to the Ever Free Forest. Be back soon. Went to the Ever Free Forest. Be back soon. Succinct and straight to the point. Just what I would expect from Turning. If Miss Devotion was the one who discovered this note, why didn't she go after him as soon as she found it? As you said yourself, the Everfree Forest is a dangerous place. I would think that would be an even bigger reason dark. for a mother to go after she her son. The Royal Order would be coming home soon, so she decided to wait until the more able-bodied pony had arrived before attempting to follow after her son. According to Miss Devotion, when Royal Order offered to go find him, she insisted on going with her husband, but he told her to stay put. She reluctantly complied and watched him leave at around half past nine. That was the last time she ever saw him. Ooh, that sounds rather ominous. Like something right out of a horror movie. Did the victim make any stops on his way to the forest? I beg your pardon? I'm just wondering if it's possible that the victim went somewhere else before entering the Everfree Forest. Hmm. I'm afraid we neglected to look into this matter, so I cannot say anything for certain. The forest entrance is roughly 20 minutes away from the victim's house. The crime scene is about 35 minutes away from the entrance. The body was discovered at 10.30 p.m. Do the math, attorney. Do you really think the victim could have dawdled before entering the forest? It's possible. Considering there was only five extra minutes to do something else, I highly doubt five it. Five extra minutes. Well, not so fast, Prosecutor Luna. Twilight? What is it, Miss Sparkle? The victim was a unicorn, wasn't he? Did he, by any chance, know how to teleport? That's right! I have to keep in mind that this is a world of magic. Not everything here follows the rules of my own world. Detective, do you have the answer to Princess Twilight's question? I do indeed, Your Highness. Royal Order was an incredibly gifted unicorn. Mm, so he had but plenty of fucking time to go where he wanted to go. Dong since mastered. So... If he could teleport, then the time it would have taken the victim to travel between locations is irrelevant. Wouldn't you say? Wouldn't he have to know have the location? Point. But, as I'm sure one as proficient in yeah. magic as yourself is aware, one cannot teleport to locations that they've never been. You mean? We could not find any indication that the victim had ever been to the castle of the two sisters before this incident. The best we could uncover were multiple instances of him and his son going to Froggy Bottom Bog, to spar with the monsters that inhabit the area. Froggy Bottom Bog, huh? 
I think I heard about that place yesterday. It's down the path that leads to the right from the crossroads, isn't it? Quite so. You can see it here on the map we drew of the forest. If one were to walk to Froggy Bottom Bog, they would first have to travel to the crossroads to get there. So that means he could at least teleport as far as the crossroads, right? He must have been there before when traveling to his farm sessions. Or he could have if also so, teleported to the bog. Teleported to the if he knew first, the bog well, he could get to the, the castle the right to the from castle. there. This could make his travel time 30 minutes at most. I suppose that's a reasonable assumption to make. Then, are you saying that between 9.30 and 10, the victim was off doing something else? Why? His son had gone off into the Everfree Forest alone at night. Do you really think he'd waste time delaying his entrance into the forest? If anything, he would have used the extra half hour he had to search elsewhere in the woods. After all, it's not like he could have known exactly where his son was. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's kind of hard to believe that Royal Order would have risked his son's safety by taking a detour, given what we've heard about him so far. Twilight? Any ideas? Unfortunately, none. I didn't think this line of questioning was necessarily going to reveal anything case-breaking, but still... It still revealed something. ...knowing a half-hour period where he could act freely without heading to the crime scene. I think that might be something we'll want to keep in mind. Definitely. I agree. It might not be relevant, but you never know. I'm sure it's going to be Sykes, relevant. Miss Sparkle, if you are done whispering over there, then let's continue with the testimony. Oh, come on, Judge. Sorry, Your Honor. Private, please continue. When he arrived at the base of the bridge, in front of the castle of the two sisters, he was ambushed and murdered. Hold it! He was ambushed? We believe so, yes. What led you to that conclusion? It was the bruise on the left side of his body. We believe that the assailant first delivered the blow to his torso in order to knock the victim to the ground. This was then followed up by at least two stabs to the head, the first of which must have killed the victim. If the victim had been on guard at the time, there isn't a chance some pony of his caliber would have been knocked down so easily. That is why we believe he was taken by surprise. But walking through that dark, dangerous forest in the middle of the night, wouldn't the victim have been on guard regardless? Perhaps. But you are forgetting something else, Miss Sykes. The victim was suffering from the effects of poison joke. Ah, weak knees! Exactly. That face. The poison joke caused the victim's legs to be weaker than normal. So, when his assailant struck him, even if he was completely on guard, it's hard to believe he wouldn't have been knocked You literally down. just said uh, it wouldn't have been true. that easy. That certainly so you just seems to make sense. contradicted yourself. And what weapon are you proposing was used to knock the victim down? We believe it was the sword of the defendant turning page, my lord. One of the defendants has a sword? A wooden one, your honor. No need to worry. I have it right here. The defendant has been known to carry this sword everywhere he goes. That night was no different. According to our witness, when she last saw the defendant, his sword was still in one piece. Yet the sword you see now is broken. Turning Page's mother has also confirmed that his sword was undamaged earlier that day. The prosecution contends that the sword broke when it was used to attack the victim. I see. That's definitely a strong possibility. The motive. Wait, hold on. That's not how the sword broke. Oh? Yes, it's true that the sword is broken right now, but that's because... Objection! Before you explain it to us, Defense, I would like you to tell us from where you learned this alternate interpretation. From... where? Well, uh, I guess it was from Turning Page. From the defendant himself, in other words? Do you truly believe that story to be reliable in that case? <sighs> Unless you have some proof to back up his story, I think you do well to keep it to yourself for now. Uh, huh? For now? In any case, the prosecution recognizes Luna that our own evidence on the matter is circumstantial. More definitive evidence may yet prove our claim to be false. At the moment, however, this interpretation of the facts surrounding the sword is the most likely scenario. 
The court agrees with the prosecution. No! I know that's not how it happened. That sword broke when Turning used it to attack those blackmailing bullies. But unless I can find some proof of that, I'm not going to be able to convince anyone. Oh, this sucks. If only I could get those two on the stand. One of them might have a bruise somewhere that I could point out. <sighs> That'll have to wait until later, though. I had to finish this testimony first. <sighs> So I assume that this sword of the defendants was also used to stab no, the it's... victim? It was not, Your Honor. There wasn't a single trace of blood on the sword. No forensic spell or potion could reveal even a single drop. But then, what was used to stab the victim? Oh boy, Scootaloo, here scooter. it comes. <clears throat> it was a possession belonging to the other defendant, Miss Scootaloo. She stabbed- How does this scooter. work? A scooter? How does that even work? Doesn't make sense. How? How is that even possible? Scooters are. <laughs> <sharp>. <laughs> are they? Not normally, my lord. But in this case, the scooter in question was broken. Broken? How? The left handlebar was snapped off, leaving behind a sharp, exposed bolt that could easily puncture a body. You can see it in the photo I submitted earlier, Your Honor. The scooter was unquestionably at the scene, and I have it recorded right here that the bolt itself was covered in blood. When tested, we discovered that the blood was indeed the victim's. What? He fell over and hit his head on it. Come on. Order! Order, I say! Hmm. I must admit, as unbelievable as it appeared to be at first, the more I listen, the more Do I, I need to like smack you upside that really bald head of yours? This crime. As regrettable as it is to think so, the evidence certainly points to that conclusion. The victim arrived on the scene and was ambushed <laughs> by his son, turning page. He used his sword to hit his father's left side. Oh my god, none and of this This attack even caused the sword to break. Thanks to the poison joke affliction that the victim was suffering at the time, he couldn't resist the impact and was knocked to the ground. At that point, the other assailant, Scooter Lou, rushed to the victim's side. Why? This is the, the thing. What is? What are the motives? Scooter, before he could even you haven't given a motive. What was happening. Hmm. Yes, that does seem to be what happened, given the evidence so far. Wait a second. I, I think there might be a contradiction in the sequence of events. Although, I might be overthinking this. No. I have to be onto something here, right? Don't doubt yourself, Athena. Twilight? If you think there's a contradiction, then go for it. I'll be right here with you. Right. Thanks, Twilight. Your Honor, I would like what Private Eye just said to be added to his testimony. Very well. Detective, if you please. Certainly, my lord. Sidupe! <laughs> The victim was knocked to the ground, and then stabbed before he could even react. Objection! Stabs on the right side, I, the bruise is on the left. In your testimony. Oh? Please, do tell. Yes, enlighten us, defense. What is this supposed contradiction? Uh, right. Um, it's... It's written here in the autopsy report. Cause of death was a single stab wound to the right temple that caused immediate death. Followed by at least one more post-mortem. It does say that, yes. But I if he got hit on the left side, he would have fallen onto his right side, so he can't be testimony. stabbed on the right side of the head. Well, but he Your could Honor, have fallen into the simple. scooter. If the victim was first knocked to the ground by a blow to his left side, as Private Eye claims, then tell me this. Which side of the victim's head would be facing up? Well, that would be the left side. It. Oh! Exactly, Your Honor. The victim would land with the left side of his head facing up, meaning it would be impossible to stab him in the right temple. Oh. Order! Order! That's certainly a puzzling contradiction. The victim couldn't possibly have been stabbed in the right temple if he were in that position. Prosecutor Luna, any thoughts? Hmm. 
You certainly pose an interesting dilemma, Defense. So, are you implying that the victim was first stabbed in the head and then hit in the torso? It would certainly help your case if you were. After all, a child would have a much more difficult time trying to stab a fully grown stallion in the head if he were standing up straight, even if one of them was a unicorn. Um, is that what I'm implying here? Could the victim have been stabbed before he was struck? That can't be it, Athena. Think back to the autopsy report one more time. The stab killed him. Ah, you're right, Twilight. Well, Miss Sykes, is what the prosecution said true? No. Are you claiming that the victim was first stabbed and then struck? I'm not, Your Honor. Y you aren't? Intriguing. And why not, defense? It says so right here in the autopsy report. This is report, all pretty obvious. The victim suffered a large bruise on the left Just side of his torso. Just gonna say that. It's really obvious. Mortem. He was hit before he was killed. Since the autopsy report notes that the victim was instantly killed by the first stab wounds, that means it would have been impossible for the victim to have been struck in the torso after he was stabbed. I... I did it! I managed to find a flaw in the prosecution's case! Way to go, Athena. Let's see how the princess tries to get out of this one. Prosecutor Luna, do you have an explanation for this seemingly unexplainable contradiction? <laughs> of course I do. Yeah, that's what I thought we was. You can explain it? Then please, share your theory with the court. At once, Your Honor. As the defense has so eagerly demonstrated for us, the victim's autopsy report creates quite a few perplexing contradictions. However, there are two explanations that can clear them all up. T two The first is a rather simple one. After the victim was struck, he fell onto something sharp, and it pierced his head. That is the most likely. <laughs> the victim fell yep. onto the murder weapon? That's well, what I would say. It might not be right to call it a murder weapon. After all, there's no proof to indicate that the assailant ever intended on killing the victim, should this be the case. And the crime scene was a forest, after all. Who knows what could be on the ground? All kinds of dangerous objects, I'm sure. Hmm, indeed. This murder could very well have been an accident in that case. But then, wouldn't the object that took the victim's life still be at the scene? You would have found it there, wouldn't you? What if he fell and Not hit his head on the scooter as he was falling? Panic, or in fear. And what about the blood on the scooter? He could have hit his head that on that when he fell over. That could the result of our real culprit wishing to frame Miss Scootaloo for the crime. Even if it was an accident, the culprit still wouldn't want to be caught. They would likely fabricate a weapon to avoid their punishment. In truth, while the stab wound in question is quite similar in shape to the exposed bolt on the scooter, Irregularities were discovered during the examination, which indicates that it's possible two different items could have stabbed the victim. I see. Which would mean the culprit is... Indeed, Your Honor. The evidence, as it stands, suggests that Turning Page was the one who knocked the victim over. On top of that, out of the two defendants, he's the only one who would benefit from making a fake weapon out of the scooter. Why would he benefit? If that's the case, then everything would line up, wouldn't it? What is the what motive? What do you think, Defense? Do you wish to argue that this was all an accident, perpetrated by Turning Page alone? You're going up against the wrong person if you think you can manipulate me into saying what you want, Princess. That being said, if I did argue that this was what happened, I could get Turning Page's sentence reduced significantly, and Scootaloo would be off the hook completely. Is that what I should do? Turning did say he'd be willing to take the blame nope. for this. Has to be the truth. Turning's looking at me. Is he trying to tell me to let him take the fall? But if I do that, then... Athena? I'm not sure what to do here, Twilight. The way things are going, I could very easily get Scootaloo off the hook and turning a light prison sentence. Hmm. That would have everything turn out just as turning as back yeah. in the defendant lobby. But I don't think I should do that. If 
I do, that'll just mean we're admitting that Turning killed his own father, even if only by accident. And that will undoubtedly have a severe effect on him. His family, his peers, they'd never look at him or treat him the same way again. <coughs> ruin his life. Even so, Turning seems to be satisfied with that. Well, I'm not. I don't care if he thinks it'd be a good thing to do. Because it isn't! I'm supposed to look out for both his and Scootaloo's best interest. And him taking the blame isn't what she wants! So if Luna's got some sort of trap waiting for me, bring it on! I'll never admit that either of them had anything to do with the Royal Order's death. If that's the path you're going down, then don't you worry. I've got your back. Thank you, Twilight. Miss Sykes! If you're done whispering to your co That's what I do! Then tell Leave us, him alone, Judge. Do you intend to argue that this murder was, in fact, an accident? No, Your Honor. I do not. You, you don't? The defense's stance is simply this. We assert that neither Scootaloo nor Turning Page had any hand, or hoof, rather, in this murder. I thought you might say that. How... Ambitious of you, little Golden Pixie. G golden Pixie? If that's the case, then you are admitting that the she second likes her explanation nicknames, for our doesn't autopsy she? contradiction is the correct one? E yes. Of course. You don't know what it is yet! As soon as I figure out what that is... Don't, don't say shit like that when you don't know. Not so confident, are you? Perhaps once we elucidate the matter, you'll see the folly of your actions. Private Eye... If you please. At once, Princess. If the issue is merely in regards to the claim that the victim didn't have time to react before getting stabbed, then the solution is simple. He did react. Ugh. When he was knocked over, he must have lifted his head to see who hit him. Once he did, his right temple would have been exposed, allowing the second assailant a chance to stab him there. <coughs> You're right! That does clear up the contradiction quite nicely. Well then, there you have it. If the defense refuses to argue that this was an accident, I, then this what is the, the motive? Am I forgetting something? The Did they go over the motive already? This isn't good. Unless I can poke a hole in this theory, we're gonna be up a creek with no paddle. There must be something we're overlooking. Shit creek is the one you're talking about. Excuse me, Golden Pixie. Um, yeah? I see you're straining yourself over there. No doubt desperately clawing for some sort of advantage in this argument. Was it that obvious? Unfortunately, I'm afraid you're not going to find one. Just look over the evidence again, and I'm sure you'll realize you're fighting on the wrong side of this debate. What? I'm fighting on the wrong side? Why did Luna say that? Was that supposed to be... Uh, Come on, think, Athena, think! Fighting on the wrong side. Fighting on the wrong side. The evidence shows that I'm fighting on the wrong... I've got it! Objection! Your Honor, there's no way the murder could have played out the way the prosecution is claiming it did. <laughs> oh? How so, Miss Sykes? Let's look back at the photo of the crime scene. Luna's being prosecuted because she has to be. It's her Here, duty. We but can she see an outline knows of the body as it was at the time of it. the discovery. She's trying to help. Looking at it, don't you find it to be a little odd? The body's laying on oh. its left side! What do you mean? The victim is on his side. Not yeah, yeah on his left claimed. side! Yes, but think back to the earlier theory. The victim was hit on the left side of his torso and was knocked to the ground. Now, if he was hit on the left side, side, then his right side should have been what hit the ground, right? Yes, I suppose so. And yet, in this photo, we can clearly see the victim fell on his left side. Oh, you're right! Hello, how are going? Ah. Order! Order! And with that order, order, we're going to end this part here. I've been going for about 30 minutes again. 
I'll admit so far this is a little annoying because there's not been any motive presented. Like, why did they kill him? Why do you think they killed him? You can't just... Okay, fair enough. With the evidence there, they were at the crime scene, so they are suspects, but you need to have a motive as well. Why did they kill him? You haven't presented that, unless I'm forgetting something from a previous episode. You've not presented that. And, uh... Okay, I'll admit, personally, I think that the first uh, possibility is the correct... Okay, let me rephrase that. I thought the first possibility was the correct one. That either he got hit, or he fell, and he hit his head. And I think that could still be a possibility, but not in the place where he's laying now, and not laying on his left side, because with the place where the scooter is sitting, compared to where he fell, if he fell over, or he got hit, and fell to the right, and hit his head there, maybe he hit his head on the scooter, and then fell left again? That is possible. But... I feel like it's much more likely he just would have hit and just sort of crumpled still on his right side right by the scooter. Um, realistically, that's probably what would happen. But um, maybe in this, they're going to go for more of a, a less realistic physics where he hits and then gets falls over to the left again. I still think it's more than likely that it's going to at least appear like an accident by the end of it, but I guess we'll see. Um... Luna, as the prosecutor, I, I, I'm fig I'm fi I figured out where she's coming from at this point. She knows they didn't do it. She's being prosecuted because that is her duty, and she's going to fulfill it. But she knows that they didn't do it. That there's something wrong here, and that they didn't do it. She can't say that, because she's the prosecutor. She's there to try to convince the jury that these two are guilty. But knowing that they didn't do it, she's going to try to help Athena in little ways, if she can, to figure out what really happened. Because I don't think she knows what really happened yet either. But uh, yeah, we will continue this shortly. I will see you in the next part. As usual, let me know what you all think. I hope you enjoyed it. Harmonia Invictus. Open your eyes, life is all around you, don't have to be so alone. Take a good look at this world you found and breathe, now you're finally home.